But I obviously prefer to have our stock sell at exactly intrinsic business value, even though we don't know that precise figure. But Charlie and I would have a range that would not differ too widely. And if it, if it sold at intrinsic business value, and we could use it as part of the consideration for buying something else at intrinsic business value, and then use cash for the balance, uh, you know, we would like that situation. Uh, and that, that's very likely to occur in the future. Uh, it's occurred in the past. Berkshire, without paying a dividend, is sold probably at or above intrinsic value as much of the time in the, in the last 35 or so years as it, as it has below. I mean, it'll bob around, and, and I do not think a dividend uh, would be a plus in terms of having it sell uh, at intrinsic value most of the time. I think that uh, might be just the opposite. I mean, here we are, we're willing to pay, you know, 110 cents on the dollar for what's in there. So the idea of, of paying out money, which we think is worth at least 110 cents on the dollar within the place, and have it turn into 100 cents on the dollar when paid out is, just does not appear attractive to us, unless we find we can't do things in the future that make sense. But our goal, and we put it in the annual report, our goal is to have the stock sell at as close to intrinsic business value as it can. But with markets, you know, the way markets operate, most of the time it'll be bobbing up or down from that level. And we've seen that now for 40 plus years. And, and we've tried to, in, at least in a way, point out where, what we think is going on. And if it, if it ever, if it and it will. I mean, when, when trades at intrinsic business value are higher, and there may be times when we will use it. We'd still prefer using cash, though. Cash is our favorite medium of purchase, just because we're going to generate a lot of it, and uh, and uh, we hate giving out shares. We do not like the idea of trading away part of C's Candy or Geico or ISCAR or BNSF, the idea of leaving you with a lower percentage interest in those companies because of any acquisition ambitions of ours is anathema to us. Charlie? Well, what he suggested is a very conventional approach, and uh, we think it's better for the shareholders to do it the way we're doing it. We, uh, I should point out, I'm in the position of giving away all of my stock between now and 10 years ahead after my death and my estate is settled, but I'm giving it away every year. You know, it will do more good in terms of its philanthropic uh, consequences if it's at a higher price than a lower price. I mean, there's nobody here that has more of an interest in the stock selling at what I'll call a fair value as opposed to a discount value than I do, because uh, I, I know I'm a, I'm, I'm not a seller, but I'm, 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 I'm disposing of the stock, and I, I would rather have it buy, you know, X quantity of vaccines than 80% of X. Uh, so it isn't like we've got some great desire to have the stock sell cheap. Uh, if it does sell cheap, we'll, you know, we'll buy it in, but our interest is really in having it sell at more or less the fair value, and we think that if we perform reasonably well in terms of running the business and if we tell the truth about the business and explain to a, to a selected group of shareholders who are interested in that aspect of investing, that over time it will average that. And, and that's happened over the years. But it doesn't happen every year. If people get excited enough about Internet stocks, they, they're going to forget about Berkshire. You know, when they get disillusioned with Internet stocks, then I'm going back 10 or 12 years on that. But that there have been... There have been times when people have gotten very excited about Berkshire, and there have been times when they've gotten very depressed. You have just